In the tent there are five wise and five foolish. And I will not be want, I, I do not want to be caught in the five foolish. But I want to be in the five wise. Amen. Saints of God. So you now have a responsibility to look within yourself and see which, area, which, which category you fall in. Which group you fall in. I'm not going to begin to point finger and say you and this one, you're in that one, you're in this group. You come this way, you come that way. No, no, no. The angels of God will do that. Right. He'll separate the goats from the sheep. He'll separate the wheat from the tares. But I'm here to give you a warning and to encourage you that we, if, if we think that we are not, align, not aligning ourselves to be a wise steward and to be a wise virgin, we can get there before it's too late. Because many times we fool ourselves thinking that I can, I can laze around and I can do what I want to do. And I used to say this, okay, so I know how we think. I know how fleshly man think, carnal man think. Out in time, I told Pastor Fazita's pastor when they came to witness to me and, and the house, when I, when I get myself together, I'll come to church. Don't worry with me. I, when I get, I, I don't need to be saved. You know what? I don't need to be saved. When I get my act together, I'll come. And I never got my act together. Amen. Saints of God. You will never get your act together until you come to God. Why? Because and even when we come to God, we still have some stuff that we need to be ironed up. Because the Bible says that Jesus is coming back for a church that is without spot or wrinkle. So saints of God, the five wise and the five foolish were waiting in the same place for the bridegroom. The, as I said, the virgins, the virgins are the church, are the body of Christ. The bridegroom is Christ, and he is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. That's why you have to keep yourself pure as a virgin. You, the woman can't be born again. The man can't be born again so they could come back uh, as a virgin. No, you can't do that. But you, saints of God, because we have been born again of the water and of the spirit of God, uh, we, as a virgin, that Christ, Christ is coming back for a virgin church. So you can say, for example, and as I said, many times we use it as a crutch. Uh, that you know what? I think I can get in by the skin of my teeth. Uh, that I can do whatever I want during the week. On Sunday morning, I'll put on my Sunday or, my, or whatever best you want to put on, uh, and I'm going to get to the house, come to the church, uh, and I'm going to give one hallelujah, one amen, and I'll say so be it, and hit the door, and that's it. I'll say it by getting in it. You better be cautious because you might not get in by the skin of your teeth. Pastor, you know, I come, I didn't come this morning, Pastor. I'm going through a lot of stuff, Pastor, and I didn't come to hear that I mightn't get it. No. You know why, saints of God? I need to tell you that we you you we need to get it together. We need to make sure that we check ourselves. Because if the trump of God were to be sounded, the Bible says, Saints of God, Jesus said, men will be giving to marriage, they'll be to Life will be going about normal, saints of God, and the trump of God will be sounded, and the dead of Christ will rise first, and they that are alive will be caught up with him. Amen. And Christians stop believing the, the, the false teachers and the false prophets that are telling you that, oh, we, we, you'll face tribulation, and you'll have to take the mark of the beast, and saints of God, the vaccine is not the mark of the beast. <laughs> I am taking the vaccine, Pastor. It's the mark of the beast. The mark of me. Look at the, 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 the what do you call the passport? The vaccine passport and stuff. And you say that's the mark of the beast. Stop with that. The false, understand, the Antichrist must come before you get the mark of the beast. Yes. And who told you that you will be here when the Antichrist comes? The spirit of Antichrist is already here. Some say Bush was the Antichrist. Some said Obama was the Antichrist. Some say Trump was the Antichrist. Some say Biden is the Antichrist. That's a lie from the pit of hell. 
The Antichrist understands things of God. Many of us will not be here, I pray, and most of us may not be here when the Antichrist comes. So that's why we must prepare ourselves and don't think that, for example, that Christ ain't gonna come yet. You know what, he might wait for me. I wanna see my children grow up. I wanna see my grandchildren grow up. I wanna see, and, and you have this all thing planned out and line up the trump of God can be sounded right now. And I pray if all of you go, I go too, and all of you don't go and leave me and I stand up here, pray, uh, I'm like, what? <laughs> Right? I saw the movie that told you all um, left behind. That scared me, man. I say, help me, Holy Ghost. Left behind. We can be left behind. So I say, you know what? I need to do an extra check on myself. Daily checks. Weekly checks. Monthly checks to check myself. Next thing you know, I'm preaching and the trump of God is sounded and everybody, oh, I only see clothes on the floor and I'm here by myself. Oh, Lord, help me. So, saints of God, to be a virgin, the church, that's why the Bible says, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. To be a virgin, you must keep yourself pure. This body is an earthen vessel. The Bible says that God has a treasure laid up in an earthen vessel. This is an earthen vessel. God has a treasure that's laid up in this earthen vessel. That treasure is a spirit he breathed inside of you. The spirit he gave you the moment you, know, you were conceived. The moment you were conceived, God gave you a spirit. That's why I, 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 I don't encourage anyone to abort any babies. There are people that are, there are people that are dying for, to have a baby. And, and there are people that are just giving them up and throwing them away. And there are people that are aborting the babies. I understand there are certain things, life might be a, tra a threat and stuff like that. I understand those facts. But saints of God, who told you that that baby won't be a, 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 an apostle Paul, or might be a Moses, or might be a, a, a Mary, or Magdalene, whatever it is, that child can be a man or woman. In the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Amen. So who told you that that child may not be one of the ones that God will set aside to be used for his honor and glory. And you can be the mother or the, and the father, or you can be the mother alone, saints of God, because understand what the devil desires to do. The devil desires to separate families, to separate the, 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 the sanctity of, of the marriage, of the home, of the family, saints of God. That's why... The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, in the last couple of verses, the Bible says that God will send his spirit, he sent Elijah in the last days. And John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And that's why the prophets that are alive today and the ministers that are preaching the gospel today, they must have the spirit of Elijah upon their body to turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children and turn the hearts of the children back to their fathers and to their mothers, saints of God. Why? Because the hearts of children today and the hearts of parents today are separated, are broken, saints of God. And that's why the enemy, saints of God, desires to destroy the family unit. That's why as a man, as a parent, as a mother, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, you are to fight for your marriage, fight for your family, fight for your children, fight for your grandchildren, fight for your future generation, saints of God. You don't let us roll aside and allow the enemy to come in in your family and wreak havoc. The devil is a liar. You can fight for, against the wiles of the enemy, the tricks of the enemy that are coming to separate the home Amen. the marriage. Amen. Well, pastor, you know, my mother don't like my wife. And pastor, you know, my mother don't like my husband and my father don't like my husband. The devil is alive. I've been through those things. I hope my mother not watching today. <laughs> I've been through those things since. 
Let me go. Let me go. Uh, okay, give me one minute. Let me go there. The Bible says, For this cause a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one. Amen. Amen. That's true. Mothers, fathers, if you're listening to me, <laughs> stay on. Leave this young man and leave the young woman alone. They are married. Leave them alone. You want to come and get budget them. You want to come and fix their, 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 their arrange, their, their cupboard and their sofa. <laughs> I'm going to go there, man. Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. Pray for me. Pray for me. Praise God. Saints of God, we have to understand that we, oh, the, when the man leaves his parents, his mother and father, he cleaves to his wife. Uh, he cleaves to his wife. He cleaves to his wife. He no longer is cleaving to the mother and father. They are there for a purpose. Not a, don't forget them. But cleave to your wife. Cleave to your husband, woman. Cleave to your husband. Amen. Well, if he might have one, Tim, she can have him. <laughs> I'm going to all of them. We are big folks. We are adults upstairs. All the kids are downstairs. That's why, saints of God, the family is disruptive. The family unit is deteriorating because we are not standing for what is right according to the word of God. Man, we need some backbone. Preach, Pastor, preach. I told, I, let me say that. I don't think my mom and dad watching, but if they're watching, I love my mom and dad. That's what's in my past. It was real, it was a whole lot of ruckus when I got married to pastor. None of my family wasn't there in the wedding. It was only her family and my friends. And I had a whole lot of friends, because back then, you know, I almost missed my wedding, you know that? How pastor, I was drunk sleeping in a hammock. But you all had to say, thank God for that woman, in spite of all my bad ways and all being a devil. She stood, stood with me. She Amen. saw something. I, I, I believe. I believe. I believe with all my heart now that God had God touched her, Amen. and God says, "You know what? Just be patient with that man." Amen. And I got to find out. Do you know what she was doing? She was taking coconut oil. She didn't have no olive oil. I, I heard now that she anointed my socks. She anointed my shoes. She anointed my pillow. She anointed everything that I had with coconut, with Amen. coconut oil and cooking oil. Yes. Saints of men, we need to have some backbone. And do you know when when there was a whole rock? I don't have time to get into detail about it. I told my parents, I said, listen to me. That is the woman I am married to, and that is the woman I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with. And if you don't love her, it's okay, but I have delivered her. And you, you should love her because she loves you. It's now to get a little sense, right? But thank God anyway. It's all right. It's all right. But we have to keep ourselves pure. And it has to begin with each one of us. It has to, if we are to keep ourselves pure, as a pure virgin, we have to begin with us ourselves. You can't expect, for example, saints of God, someone else to come and to try to, yes, we'll try to help you get it together. But you have to decide in your heart and take responsibility that, oh, you know what? I have some stuff I need to work on in myself. And I'm going to be honest with myself. I'm going to be truthful with myself. And I'm going to say, yes, I have this spirit of unforgiveness. I don't, I couldn't, I can't forgive this one. I can't forgive that one. I have the, that root of bitterness in my life. I have a problem with anger. I need anger management. I need some prayer. I need some deliverance, Pastor. De Pastor, can you pray for me today? I need some deliverance from some stuff, Pastor. I, I have some stuff that's yoked in my life, Pastor. And it's not beneficial for my life. I need uh, so for you to pray for me, Pastor. And show me, guide me the right way. That I, yes, uh, I love Christ. Yes, uh, I love my family. But it seems as though that there are some things that have been latched on in my 
life and I can't seem to shake it loose, Pastor. Saints of God, that's when you know, when you confess and you know you have a problem. That's why when we come to Christ, we must confess our sins. Saints of God, and just like we confess our sins and Jesus forgive us and he threw it in his ear forgetfulness, we can confess in our faults, in our faults and be truthful to ourselves so the Holy Ghost can come and deliver us, saints of God. The Bible says we are to lay aside the sins of the way that so easily besets us for all ages. And saints of God, we have to be a people that are truthful and honest to ourselves and we have to be a people have to understand that the brother or the sister can say, you know what, uh, let me open the eyes of your understanding. I'm speaking to you with love uh, and in truth and uh, with love uh, in my heart. Uh, you know that the way you think or the way that you say those things, that's a wrong way. That's not the right attitude to have. Uh, and, and that's an area it doesn't line up with the word of God. Uh, and say to her, well, who she thinks she is? Uh, I, I'm older than she. I'm older than him. Who do you think he is? Uh, say to God, do you know, understand this, uh, saints of God. It doesn't matter how old you are. You have to be a teachable man, a teachable woman because I can preach to you all year, week in, week out. And if you are not teachable, you don't have a teachable spirit, you ain't going to get nowhere in life because you come and you might sit or you sit or you go or, or you watching the live stream and you say, well, I'm just watching because I have nothing else to do. And he can't tell me nothing now that I don't know. The devil is a liar. There's a this God says, the Spirit of God, Isaiah 61, oh, Luke chapter 11, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. The anointing that God has placed upon my life is to preach the gospel, is to find the broken hearted, is to find the works of the enemy that's against your life, is to set the captives free because of the authority, because of the anointing. And whatever is yoked in your life that is not of God, I speak to her today. In the name of Jesus, I bind every yoke upon it. I lose every shackle that's upon your life. In the name of Jesus, I set you free today to be the man, to be the woman that God has called to be. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Let me get to this lamp and stuff like that. And I'll be sure, I'll be, I'll be like myself. So saints of God, the lamp, or uh, you want to know why I get this right? I get this in our old trip shop. All the way in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. The lamp is an earth vessel. I'm just going to go quickly as the Spirit of God lead me. The lamp is like an earthen vessel. God says he has a treasure laid up in an earthen vessel. The lamp, saints of God, is like an oil wine skin. So now God wants to pour some oil which represents the anointing, which represents the Holy Spirit in us, saints of God. But we have to have a vessel prepared and ready for God to pour the new wine in a new wine skin. We can't want to be anointed or we can't want to stand against the devils in our home or in our family and we are not removing the stuff from the earthen vessel. We are not saying to ourselves, uh, you know what? Uh, I, I'm going to clean. I'm going to keep this vessel pure. I'm going to keep this vessel clean. Uh, and I'm going to begin with my taught life. Uh, I'm going to begin with my taught life because that's where it begins. Uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Does any one of you study psychology, you will understand this. I did a little, all right? Not much, little, a little. You can listen to someone, somebody speak and then you can know where they're coming from or what kind of person they are. You can listen how they carry themselves. But you have to be observant. And the earthen vessel, the lamp is like an earthen vessel. So God wants this earthen vessel to be a virgin, to be pure, to be clean, to be washed. That's why we can't be like a whitewashed tomb, Jesus said. Mm -hmm. We're looking good on the outside, but inside we are filthy. That's right. 
And there are some like that. Mm -hmm. Looking good outside, but filthy inside. Mm -hmm. That's right. And saints of God, the Bible says, the five wise virgins, they took oil with them. They took their lamp. And saints of God, we need, the, as is, the earthen vessel is the lamp. And we need the lamp, but we need a wick. We need a wick. So the oil is the Holy Ghost, the anointing. So the five foolish virgins, they say, you know what? I don't need to go carry no extra oil with me. I, I, I can do whatever I want. I can live however I want. And I'll make it in, man, because we all in the same place. Elder Ken go make it. I know Elder Ken living right. And I, he, when he make it in, I go get in because I go hold on to his his clothing. And I'll get in, man. I'll grab on to him when he's going up. Are you holding on to Sister Patty? Okay, sorry. Well, why are you holding on to her? So you say, I'll hold on to his foot, man. I'll get it in, man. No, it doesn't work. Right. We are responsible for, for, for ourselves, first of all, and I'll get to the community of the church in a moment, but we're responsible for ourselves because we are working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. This don't, this, uh, don't use grace as a crutch to do whatever you want to do and live however you want to live. That's a wrong gospel. That's a self-deception. Well, you know what? I can do whatever I want to do or whatever you feel to do on a Saturday night uh, and, and Sunday morning. Grace, God, I thank you for your grace. Your mercy is a brand new morning by morning. I thank you, Jesus. And you're using grace, saints of God, as a crutch. Oh, you're using that grace to say, you're using it as the wrong way. Mm -hmm. If you sin, if you sin, not willful sinning. Mm -hmm. If you sin, you have an advocate with the Father that you can go boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy in the time of need. But saints of God, the earthen vessel, the lamp, need a wick. And that weak, saints of God, is your spirit. And going as the Holy Ghost, speak to me. The weak is your spirit because now when you're saved, your, your spirit and the Holy Ghost has become one. So you have been transformed. You have been transformed by the renewing of your mind, your spirit. You have been born again. You no longer have the heart of stone, but your heart have a heart of flesh. Ezekiel the prophet says that God will remove the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. He will give us a new spirit. Because saints of God, when we are born again, we have a new spirit. That's why when you look at a believer as a Christian and they are born again, their life is changed. They are transformed. They are no no longer the old man. The Bible says, Behold, every man in Christ is a new creature. The old things have passed away, and the old things have become new. Amen. Amen. Some people would need deliverance, some people would need to be transformed by the renewing of the mind, and so forth. But you have Paul said in, in, in Romans 12, verse 1, We are off our bodies to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service unto Him. And if we don't offer the vessel, this earthen vessel, this body, uh, we can't be receiving the anointing oil from the Holy Ghost. Uh, Say to God, because God can't pour. Understand, God is the God of decency and order. He ain't going to pour out no anointing on a vessel that needs to be cleaned. Why? Because he can't pour new wine on old wine skin. The wine, you know what will happen with the wine skin? It'll burst. Uh, and the wine skin will be destroyed. And the wine will be wasted. God will have time to waste his anointing on no one. That's why it is our responsibility to clean this vessel. As the Holy Spirit opens the eyes of the understanding and we see the sanctification, we are being sanctified. Sanctified means to be consecrated, to be separated, to be made holy. We are going through sanctification, but while we are going through that, and the, the Lord, the Lord knows our heart, the intent, intent and content of our heart, He pour out in us. And I'll just dirty the table, it's fine. We'll clean up. So we need a wick. The wick, I'm just using an analogy, okay, is like your spirit. 
that has become one with the Holy Ghost. Yes. So now your spirit has become one with the Holy Ghost. Ten moments, I'm finished. So now your mind, it's okay. Your mind, your will, and your emotions is subjected to the Holy Ghost. When your flesh, your carnal man tells you, I want this, I, I want, I feel, I think. And it's not aligned with the word of God. He says, no, 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 that's not God. I, 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 I want to curse them out. Uh, your flesh telling you, you can curse them out. And you know you want to put your hand like this, right? Woman, right? Man, you too, you ain't going to put your hand like this, but you want your tongue itching you to curse them out. <laughs> and your flesh will tell you, you know you could curse them out, and it'll be all right in the, when you're done. You can ask God to forgive you. And the flesh man is trying to assert the spirit man, the Holy Ghost in you, and, and because the flesh is enmity with the Spirit of God, there's a battle that's going on. And you are now are giving in to the emotions of anger and so forth. Saints of God, there is righteous anger and there's unrighteous anger. Righteous anger is, for example, when Jesus came to the temple and he threw out the money changers uh, and he got angry with them and he whipped them. That's righteous anger. Unrighteous anger is, for example, you come home and something happened in the job or something happened some way when you're driving to to home or whatever or riding the train and you come home man and you get mad something get you mad your key can't turn properly the husband didn't put the, the wd-40 on the lock and you get mad man your key and i'm breaking in the lock and you get mad you coming inside the house and you're mad with everybody you're mad with everything you throw it away stuff in the house and you're mad you throwing pots and pans away and you just mad man i don't know what is going on i don't know why is this and you, and you, you know why? What's going on? You need to be delivered from anger, spirit of anger, because why? You allow yourself to go way beyond the anger level that you should have had. It is okay to get angry that you keep broke, but why are you taking it out on yourself? Why are you opening up yourself, your heart, and say, Devil, come, here I am. Get, use me as a vessel of anger. And everybody, your neighbor, get it to the dog, get it to the cat, get it to the goldfish, and not. I don't know what you're doing, but you, you take it out of you. are going to get no food today because I'm mad. I'm mad. Everybody gets mad. you mad with everybody and everything. Amen. That's unrighteous anger. Use just anger. Let me say this quickly. Use just anger to punish your kids, for example. Your kids spill a glass of milk. And you get mad because the spill a glass of milk. Oh, mommy, daddy, I'm sorry. I, it is a mistake. Man, you, uh, you might do that now, but you ground them for a week without food or whatever. No food for you tonight. You better feed the child. It's a mistake. If the child take the glass of milk and smash it on it, well, that calls for something to take place. I ain't going to tell you what. That call for something to take place. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what. But you, as a child, for example, you can't get mad for and do stuff like that. Something has to take place. And if, for example, quickly, if, for example, the child is is exerting that type of anger or reacting that way, then you have to look at yourself first of all. Am I doing anything to empower that anger? Am I, is the child seeing me exerting that kind of anger? How are we doing the self check? Am I exerting unnecessary anger with my spouse or with the rest of the, the, the children? And the child is seeing what I do and they're doing it. Or are they seeing someone somewhere doing that? Oh, pastor, maybe you have an anger problem and you're trying to suppress it and understand it, that something can be transferred to the child or if not you, the, the next spouse. 
But while you are, I don't, I don't, don't have time to go to deep. But while you are pregnant, woman, while you are pregnant, uh, the man was treating you all how, and you are mad every day. Because what you are going through, and, and it is it's understandable, but you are carrying that child, and that child is feeding on your emotions, and feeding on whatever state of mind you were in. Because you didn't have time to read or oh, song, song, and sing for the child. The man was coming home angry, the man was mad, and you, or the father, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law was mad at you, or the sister-in-law, the brother-in-law was mad at you, and you had to run and hide, you were living in fear, and and your child, saints of God, will feed off of the things that you were dealing with because of the emotions and so forth. It is transferable. Amen. And you might be good now. Today you might be good. But the child or the grandchild might be facing some things that may have split, come down from you or your grandparent. Check the child. Or check yourself first, quickly. So saints of God, the wick is your spirit. And your, the Bible says your body, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the earthen vessel, has a spirit in it. It has a soul. The soul is the mind or the intellect. The soul is the mind or the intellect, the will and the emotions. So saints of God, all those things are in the wick. And if that is not in line with the vessel and the oil it ain't gonna work out so now the five foolish says you know what I ain't gonna walk with no oil but the five wise says you know what I am gonna live a life pleasing to God they're treating me. They're, they're talking also, whatever it is. Whatever you go through, you're going through, saints of God. You keep your peace. You hold your peace and let God fight your battles. Amen. Amen. You don't have to fall into their trap. And then you fall into a Twitter war, a Facebook war, or, or, or what's the next one? Met on text message war. And you start a whole World War Three on, on social media. Or email, all those emails and stuff like that. You don't need all of that, saints of God, to bring you down and, 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 fill, uh, and have your spirit uh, messed up. But if I, if I says, you know what, I'm going to walk with extra oil. Because you know why? I am being wise. I'm being humble before God. And I'm going to make sure that I stay and stay truthful to God. And I'm going to fill my vessel. And the Bible says that while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So we all do some stuff that we're not supposed to be doing. So I can't, I, you understand? All slumbered and slept. When they're supposed to be watching and praying for the appearing of the Lord. So while they all slumbered and slept, they cried. There was a cry. That the bridegroom is coming. So look what happened, saints of God. The Bible says that they woke up. They trimmed their lamps. I don't want to put it on yet because I don't want to fire it. <laughs> so the Holy Ghost is the oil. The wick is the spirit man, the spirit soul, uh, soul, mind, will, and emotions. The lamp is the earthen vessel, the body, because God has a treasure in this. So the Bible says they woke up and they trimmed their lamps. So look what has to take place. It come, we come into a community of believers, the body of Christ. If I trim my lamp like this, it means to say if I walk by myself, I'm in darkness. We didn't call to walk by ourselves. The Bible says we are many members of one body. Do you know what had to take place? Okay, brother. Okay, sister. You trim yours. But I am going to keep mine light in it. And when you trim, I light your lamp. That's why the strong must bear the infirmities of the weak. Thanks to God. 
Why are you going for this? So now the 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 the, the, the all right, I'm going too fast. We trimmed their wick. So they were walking with their trimmer. They walk with their lamp. They walk with their wick. They walk with their oil. They walk with their trimmers. Do you know what is the trimmer? The trimmer is the husband man, God the Father. He is the husband man, Jesus the vine, we are the branch. The husband man, he comes and he prunes the branch so we can bear fruit, saints of God, until our fruit will remain. And while we are bearing fruit, he continues trimming us and trimming is painful. I'm, the, I'm going as the Holy Ghost lead me. This fresh off the press. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm so I feel so joyous in my spirit. It's all glory to God. Saints of God. So now the, the God of God, through the revelation of the Holy Spirit, trims some stuff off of the by the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions, which is the wick. Because our spirit must be aligned with the Holy Ghost. We must, the, this same mind that was in Christ ought to be in us. So the wick is the spirit man. The wick is the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. And if it does not line up with God, or if there's no peace, there is no joy, uh, there is no patience. And saints of God, we have to be trimmed so the father will trim, who is the husband man, will trim our wick, will trim our mind, our will, our emotions, and say to us, that attitude you have is bad. You better get rid of that, and I have this peace for you. Ah, uh, saints of God, understand, Jesus said, my peace I'll leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Understand, the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and look what happens. At midnight hour, there was a cry that the bridegroom is coming. So you have to expect the bride to come at any time and prepare yourself, says the God, and be attached with the community of believers, the church, the body of Christ, because Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall prevail against it. So Jesus was saying, the devil will not prevail against you, but you have to come together as a body of Christ also and knit together because we are men with one body, the strong must bear the infirmities of the weak, and you are weak today, brother, and we are going through a trial, and it seems as though there's a long war that's taking place between the house of Saul and the house of David, but the house of David, ah, uh, say you belong to the house of David, Jesus Christ came from the line of the tribe of Judah, Judah, saints of God, Jesus came from the line of David, and David, Yerosha, you will grow stronger and stronger, because God is with you, and God before you, who can be against you? And you can do all things through Christ who strengthen you. It is the anointing that abides in you that's going to take you through the trial. It is the anointing, the abiding presence of God that's going to take you through the tribulation. That's going to take you through the testing. Thank you, God. All right, I'm almost finished. So the Father will reveal to you to the Holy Spirit and through his word mm -hmm. what needs to be trimmed Amen. and the trimming is painful and do you know this is the trim we, we, we trimmed out <laughs> well pastor you know I want to hold on to it pastor I feel comfortable in this pain yeah. and I like to have a pity party pastor mm -hmm. you know I like the, ex uh, the extra attention I get uh, when I put up a tantrum and I say, you see, you see, I, I did not deserve this. I, this happened to me in 1901. I, I still got it. And you let God trim you. I'm not being heartless, but I'm coming. I want to bring you to the place uh, where you'll be delivered, where you'll be healed, where you'll be renewed, where you'll be restored. Because God wants to pour new wine inside of you so you can grow, saints of God. And your anointing can flourish because you are a soul of the earth. You are a light of the world. You are a city on a hill. How can your light last shine? And you, because we've called to be a city on a hill, if we are not trimmed, if we don't have the anointing in us, because well, you know what will happen? We will look just like the world. Amen. Hope you all walk with a good offering today. You're getting good preaching, right? No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Praise God. So you see this wick? Get rid of that. When I was, oh, my, I got hurt 
by an ex. An ex go on and doing what he or she has to do and you're still hurting. <laughs> I can't get over pastor. <laughs> Sometimes you might need, you know, some five-fold ministry on you. <laughs> no, no. But you need to understand that God will does not want you to carry that pain, that hurt, right. whatever it is. Right. He's the Pam of Gilead. Mm -hmm. Wherever you've been wounded, where you where those that are bruised, you've been bruised. Mm -hmm. Some of you have been bruised when you were a young girl, mm -hmm. a young boy. Mm -hmm. Some of you have been bruised as adults in a bad marriage, in a bad relationship. Some of you have been bruised by some family member in whatever way it is. But some of you might have been bruised by mommy and daddy, you're stupid. You ain't gonna amount to nothing. Look at you. You can't even walk straight. Look at you. The devil is a liar. I'm a child of God. I'm fearfully and what you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're an apple of God's eye. God didn't waste his time bringing you. The devil is a liar. Who's telling you that? Tell them they're a liar. Oh, well, if they told you that years ago, say you're a liar. I reverse all those curses, all those bad words that have been spoken over my life. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a child of God. I'm of a royal priesthood. I'm of a chosen generation. I'm a peculiar people. I'm a peculiar people. I've been chosen. I've been predestined by God. He foreknew me before I was even born. Amen. Amen. There you are. Amen. Still living in all the hurts. You know when I take off my jacket, I mean business, right? <laughs> Get ready for our next hour or so. Go, go. Praise God. So we trim. Now, as I said, the neighbor keep their lamp lighting. I grew up with this. Hard living. Yeah. And flambo too, or some of you know what flambo is, right? <laughs> 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 Praise God. So the neighbor had his light lamp lighting. But I want you to think about the lamp light, the, the light, light like this. This is the Holy Ghost, the fire that sat upon the apostles when they were all in one accord in unity in the upper room. When Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endured with power. Some of us can't wait, man, for God to do it. I want it right now. Microwave prayer. Pew, boo, 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 one minute. Shh. Popcorn. I want it right instant coffee. Shh. I want it right now, Lord God. Why are you waiting so long, God? And can't you see everything is instant messaging, instant texting, instant email, instant microwave cup, popcorn, instant um, coffee, and everything is instant. I want it right now, God. Why is it taking so long? Wait on God. Allow God to do it for you. Do you know why? Because when He done it for you, He'll do a perfect work. He'll do a good work. Saints of God, because God has a perfect will for his people. Amen. So while we dwell together, while we're waiting on those on the bridegroom, look what happened. They wake up from their slumber. So the five wives check themselves too. Oh, we were sleeping. That's why we are not to get, he that think at his stand, we have to think. Don't think we, uh, we must be very cautious and think that we stand. Quote the scripture from yourself. Take heed, lest he fall. We have to take heed. Because we can be slumbering. Oh, I hear in Jesus coming back since I was small. Since before I was born, I hear in Jesus coming. You know what he's when he's coming? He's coming when you least expect he's coming. That's right. Amen. That's right. You know that's what he used, right? I used to use that, so I know. <laughs> so say something like Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. So as a wise virgin, Lot wife Kate was coming out. I say I'm running with this, right? Lot wife coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah with her husband and with two of her daughters. Understand the rest of her daughters was she, they remained down there with with this with her son, this the husband and and the angel brought them out and she's so caught up with the stuff in the back 
back up her life. When we when she's supposed to be looking on the Jesus, the altar and finish of her faith. When she's supposed when her faith supposed to be alive, she's taken up on the path. She taken up on the life. She left behind in Sodom and Gomorrah. Allah says about her. The Bible says the woman with the alabaster box. Her name was Mary Magdalene. She was delivered from seven demons. Let your past be your past. Says about break up with the past and go forward because God has a good plan for you. God loves you. He brought you this far and He's able to complete a good work He started in you. The Bible says Mary Magdalene broke the alabaster box and it always has some naysayers around you. You're going to get away from them. We're going to sell that perfume for a whole lot of money and feel it a whole people, uh, poor people. You'll always have the poor with you, Jesus said. You caught up. It's good we're doing the poor stuff, right? We do that. I'm not heartless. We're sending stuff to St. Vincent right now, whatever. You all have been so gracious to us. And those of you who haven't, you need to get on board and give an offering or something. We sent four and three, seven barrels. Four last week, three this week. We don't need to put it up in Facebook, children. But God sees in secret, He bless openly. Yeah. He bless you all because you are, but once you all are partaker of those things. So say to God, don't allow yourself to be held back, held back with your own self. And you will turn to a pillar of salt, you'll be useless. And the Bible says they, they woke up, they trimmed their lamps, and do you know what the five foolish says? Can you give us some oil? <laughs> now remember, these five foolish didn't say, understand. Foolish people, come, 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 deacon. Foolish people ever talk like this. Ask him for some, ask Elder for some oil. Elder, may I have some oil? Sorry, don't have any. <laughs> ask him again. You like the oil? I, not enough. No, you need to ask him like you really need the oil. <laughs> Elder, I need this oil. It's important. Please, I need some oil. I love you, but you gotta go get some. Oh. No, now I want you to understand something. The foolish people that ain't gonna come to say, um, "What to you? You have a lot of oil. You can't give me some." <coughs> Share with your neighbor. What happened to you? That's why you love me. No, oh, you know I have a great deal of respect for you. I, you know, you know, you you are in church a long time, and I need some oil. You see, all of us been together for so long. Bible says God gives wisdom to those who ask Him. Amen. You willingly give them. Amen. You want wisdom from another man and you can ask God for wisdom free. We understand that he, for example, he has wisdom that he can impart. But there's a wisdom that you can receive from God for yourself. Amen. Amen. And he now, he ain't going to rough him up and, and be aggressive. Some of them might be like that. That's like the devil. They're filled with the devil. But he'll say, you know, we've been together for so long. I know your family, man. You know, I know your I know your kids, man. We've been here for so long in this ministry. Can you give me some oil, man? Spare a little something, man, for you and I. And do you know what the five wise says? Thank you. The five wise sense says, not so. Understand. Some people need a two-word answer. Okay, I'm going aboard my time. Some people need a two-word answer. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Do you know that we as believers don't know how to draw lines and boundaries? And that's something we know. Do you know why? Because we quote the scripture, well, they have to go the extra mile, you know. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, we, we, uh, we are so loving and, and sometimes uh, uh, they, they might bring the, all the word of God to you. They might tell you all the word. They might choose the word of God to you. Then God say, God is love. And if you love me, you're going to lend me this money. If you love me, you're going to do this for me. And that's bondage. That's manipulation. That's intimidation. If you love me, you can do this. If you love me, you can do that. That's intimidation. That's manipulation. That's control. Say to God. And 
Mm. Now, husband and wife, marriage is honorable and the bed on the file, all right? That's between you and your husband up in the bed. If it's, all right? You know, sometimes they, they use, my, they only use the guilt on you, right? You know, honey, if you love me, you know, uh, you know. Make sure everything is in line with God. All right? Not no indecency. Not because the, the bed is on the file, the uh, men, and this goes for you watching too. Not because marriage is honorable and the bed is on the file. Men and women, you're going to have the, the bed on the, the file because of all sorts of ungodly and unholy stuff. Not anything goes because God says that. We misunderstand that. So saints of God, as believers, we have to know where to draw the line. You can't help every Tom, Nick, and Harry, Larry, Burr, and Curly. Dorothy, what's the next one? Blanche and, and Rose and Sophia, all of them, you want to help everybody. Oh, you have to learn to stand up and draw the line and say, no, 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 no. You're not going to come in my, my marriage. You're not going to come in my family business. You're not going to come and you, you, you uh, the devil is, you have to know where to draw the line in your life. And if we don't know where to draw the line, what will happen is you will end up not having enough to, to, to go to and see the bridegroom. Okay, let me put it this way. You're being drained out. You're being drained out. Mm -hmm. You, they're calling you to get your, your encouragement. I'm not saying that is bad, but they're drawing you out. And they want to come where you get in your eye, Phil. Tell them, Pastor said to come. And they're drawing you out, or because they know it might be it, it, nobody here, but it might be some friend or some family, and they're drawing you out. Well, you know what, sister, you know what to do today? I want to put on the pastor's message or put on some anointed message uh, that a man that is preaching, a woman that's preaching that gospel, and receive the anointing of God so that the yokes can be destroyed. Isaiah 10 27 says the yokes are destroyed because of the anointing. That anointing that's abiding in you will destroy the yokes. So nowhere to draw the line. And you're being drawn out day after day after day, week after week after week. Because this one way to pray for them, that one way to pray for them. I know we, we can't say, some of us, we can't say no. We can't say, you know what, I, I'm, I, I can't make today, I'm tired. And you're being drawn. And you have to come, you have to come in whatever day it is, Friday or Sunday, you have to come for me to fill you up. And when you're supposed to be overflowing, you I have to come to fill you up and fill you up and fill you up and go back to be drained. Be cautious. So the brother now, or the sister, while I trim my lamp, he lit, he lit, he lit me up. Don't light them up, eh? Sometimes we hard to light, right? <laughs> Sometimes we like that. We hard to get lighted up. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to come in church ready. Yeah. We're supposed to come in church. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to be praying from the bathroom from the time we wake up in the morning. I praise you, Lord God. I know it's not the stuff I'm dealing with, God. I know you're gonna handle it. Because Lord, you want some praise for me, God. Amen. Lord, you want some praise for me, Lord God. Amen. So Lord God, and you say, well, you get up in the morning, I hope pastor speak to me this morning. I hope pastor prophets, Lord, I want a word. I need a word, pastor, Lord. Uh, Lord. And you tell him, God, you need a word from pastor, and the Lord is saying, shut up, shut up. I, I, I want to give you a word from me, from the Holy Ghost, sir. I want you to praise me first, sir. But I, don't go, don't bring a man in it for yet. I want you to see me first. See me first. Come to me first. Praise me first. Lift up my name first. Glorify my name 
first. Lift up the name of Jesus first. Exalt God first. Say to God, and understand what happens when you set yourself in the right place, with the right spirit, with the right attitude. The spirit of God comes. You come in the church, and the man of God know how to say nothing to you, but you receive your breakthrough even before you get to the house of God. And don't turn around because you're driving coming, and you're all fired up. You're burning in the Holy Ghost. It's burning inside of you. Your light is shining and because the anointing is inside of you. Because all the depths of your belly is pouring rivers of living water. So you get your breakthrough, you get your anointing while you're on your way. The joy of the Lord began to raise up inside of you. When the devil comes in like a flood, God will raise up his standard in you. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand on thy right hand, but it shall not come near to you. Make sure you don't make a U-turn and go back. Amen. Come to the house of God. Amen. He says, you know what? Woo! I don't want to wait beyond my time. Come to the house of God. And when you read Acts chapter 16, it says at midnight. Ah, the stuff happens at midnight. The kind of stuff that happens at midnight. That all when all the devils are loosed. All the drug pushers, all the prostitutes on the street, all the stuff going on at the midnight hour, all the devils are loosed at that midnight hour. But in the book of Acts chapter 16, the Bible says that at midnight, Paul and Silas, they were in that prison. You see, when you have the anointing, when you have that extra oil, saints of God, when you've been storing up uh, in prayer and reading your word uh, and hearing the gospel, uh, when you've been storing up in praise and worship, uh, you carry that oil uh, with you, you carry that anointing with you. And now, uh, saints of God, uh, the time comes when you need an anointing, that midnight hour, when you just feel like giving up, uh, when all the cares of the world is upon you at midnight hour, when uh, he's sleeping. When he's snoring and sleeping next to you, woman, like me sometimes, uh, when I'm tired, I'm, so you, the wife wake up, the wife is up in the night thinking how this is going to be paid, how that is going to be paid, how this is going to take place. Uh, Saints of God, uh, pour some oil in your burden vessel, pour some oil in your lamp, Saints of God, uh, and you might need to trim your wick, uh, you might just need to trim your wick, uh, and just, you might need to just come out of the room uh, and say, honey, I hear you be snoring still, you leave him alone, uh, and Saints of God, uh, you might just need your wife snoring and sleeping, you leave her alone, man. And you come outside and you say, God, I praise you. I honor you, God. You've been good to me, God. You brought me this car, God. And I know you're able to do it, God. Lord God, you're the Lord. You can, ah, look, just look back where God has brought you from. Hey, you could have died. Says you are, you could have lost your mind. But God kept you. Says the God. You almost died in an accident. You almost died in a surgery. But God kept you. When the marriage fell apart, you almost lost your mind. You thought life was over. But God kept you. God kept you. When the devil said to you, that ah, you're never going to be with your husband or your wife again no more. But God kept you. God kept you. When God, when the devil told you, you'll lose a child. A child. You'll lose a child. A child will be born to you. The devil is a liar. God kept you and a child. God kept your marriage. Fight for your marriage. Those of you that are married. Fight for your children. Say to God, let that oil burn. Let your light shine. Say to God. Oh, Jesus. And I'm closing now. Closing. How much time is this to close? <laughs> Twelve? <laughs> now nah, you've gone too much. Now you know what's happening? The wick is too short. Yeah. I had a long wick upstairs, but I forgot to bring it up. So the oil, the wick can't reach the oil. <laughs> Properly. You know what happens? We get stunted sometimes. Because yes. we don't have some strong, deep roots. Mm -hmm. We like, you know, we like those trees that plant the park plant. Mm -hmm. And they're all big and, and tall. 
and they have no root. Get some root. What oh, Pastor way I mean? Get yourself rooted and grounded in the word of God Amen. and your personal relationship with God. And if you're watching and you don't have a church, you better find yourself in a church that's preaching the gospel. Amen. Not preaching politics, not preaching people business. What the what Jane do, Pastor Jane do, and Pastor John do, do down the road, that's their business. Hear what the light as he's supposed to light. He threw some oil on him. He did a little oil on you, man. He did a little oil on you. Talk to you. God knows. God knows how to give you just enough to last you through the battle Amen. through the storm Amen. and as I close now Acts chapter 16 verse 25 Whew. Yes. at midnight all you might need is a little oil on you Amen. if there be any sick among you little cough it and then they'll anoint you with oil all you might need is a little anointing Amen. the Bible says Paul and Silas was in prison and at midnight they began to pray and sing praises to God. Amen. Now you think Roman prison, the Roman, you think it was in where they have internet and where they have phone and, and where they're getting um, steak and potatoes for lunch. No, 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 no. They were in bondage. They were in chains, rats, and the place was stink. Saints of God, do you think the prison in prison in then was now? No, 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 no. But do you know what Paul and Silas did? I'm not gonna let my environment dictate what I have inside and now what, what can come out from the inside. I want it to come out outside because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh and out of the depths of a belly shall flow rivers of living water. So it ain't gonna come out. I've seen some trouble right now, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna use the four letter word. I'm not gonna say how your mother made you and how your father made you and stuff like that. I'm gonna say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I lift up your name, God. Lord, because you are mighty and mighty to save. You are Jehovah, Jireh, your provider. You are El Shaddai, your God, almighty God. Lord, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly of all that I may ask for take according to your power that's working inside of me. According to your Holy Ghost power, you are anointing that's working inside of me because the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you and I. Jesus said the Holy Ghost will be with you and in you. Let the Spirit of God rise up inside of you and speak those things. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that ah, Lord God. Speak to that devil. Speak to that giant. In the name of Jesus. Because you have been anointed with victory for the battle. Amen. Don't forget, tall guys, don't, just raise this up for me a moment. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Don't forget the team for last year. Mm. The, 30, the, 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 the old New Year's Eve service, mm -hmm. 2019. Mm -hmm. The Lord says in the first Samuel chapter 15, yes. When, when Samuel anointed David and the Bible said the Spirit of God came upon David that same day, he anointed him with a horn of oil. You have been anointed with victory for the battle. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen. You forget that anointing that God has placed inside of you. It is for victory because you have won the victory through amen. Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Praise God. Is that everything else to help me, Holy Ghost? Praise God. Hallelujah. You're Amen. burning. You keep burning. You, you, the bridegroom come. And do you know what he told the... Uh, you can take this away now. Do you know what he told the five foolish ones? The door locked. I never knew you. Please let us not fall in that gr group of the five yes. foolish. Amen. When the bridegroom calls at midnight. Amen. Let us not be in that group. Let us check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Stand to your feet tonight, this, to this morning. Praise God. Can I have some water, child? Praise God. Praise God. I 
know it's hard sometimes to deal with the pain of the past hurts and disappointments and all that goes with it. Mm -hmm. It might be present too. Mm -hmm. What happens is if we don't deal with the past stuff and the, we are dealing with stuff in the present that adds up bills. That's right. And we explode like a wine skin. Mm -hmm. Like an old wine skin. I remember back in the days, many, many moons ago, Pastor used to make um, wine for me. And uh, she had this in this this soda bottle, this plastic soda bottle, under the bed. The wine she made, the fruits, and just like we have a gunshot. The vessel was not the right vessel for the wine, so the vessel broke. The wine was washed. When God pours in us, He wants us to be able to withstand mm -hmm. the storms, mm -hmm. withstand the trials of life. Mm -hmm. And as we grow in God, as we come to trust Him, right. that anointing increases in us. Mm -hmm. That anointing, no man or woman of God does not stay the same way. Your anointing increases, your level of authority increases, your faith increases, faith to faith, strength to strength. Glory to glory. You don't remain stagnant. We in our own self allow ourselves to remain stagnant. You're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I need some fresh oil. The Bible says in the, the book of Isaiah 10, 27, the yokes are destroyed because of the anointing. And all I need to do is release the word of God in your life today. And Lord God, everyone that are under the sound of my voice today. Just, just praise him for a moment. Let me have a, a little water. God told Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house. You'll see the potter, he's working on work in the wheel. And the Bible says that God is the potter, we are the clay. Though you've been marred, the pot, the pot been marred, the pot was damaged. And the, the Bible says that the potter, he was working the work, the pot, he was working on the potter, and the pot was marred, means damaged. And the potter, he began to work it over again, and he made it into a vessel of honor, not unto dishonor. God wants to mold us and shape us to be the people he has called us to be and ordained us to be, saints of God. He wants our light to shine before men, so that they will see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. The Bible says we are the salt of the earth. Allow God to work in you. Allow the Spirit of God to work in you. Amen. Lift your hands to heaven this morning. Lord God, everyone that are under the sound of my voice today, that are in this house, Lord God, I ask you to touch them. Lord, even those that are viewing the live stream, I bring them before you also, Lord God. Lord, you know them by name and by nature. And Lord, even the ones that will watch, oh God, the live stream later, God, the ones that are, li that are living overseas and here also, God. And those, everyone that are under the sound of my voice in this house today, Lord God. Every family that is represented here today, Lord God, I bring them before you today. You know them by name and by nature. You order their steps in this house today, Lord God. And you know them, God. You know every hair on their heads, oh God. You know their down sittings and their uprisings, oh God. You know their weakness and their strength, oh God. And Lord God, your host, you know the trials they are facing. You know the persecutions, oh God, that they are going through, Lord God. You know, God, your children, God. And Lord God, I thank you today that you are hearing their hearts cry, Lord God. And even though many are the afflictions of the righteous, you will deliver them out of all the afflictions, 
today, Lord God. Uh, Lord God, I rebuke the plans of the enemy that's against your people today, Lord God. I release your anointing upon them, Holy Spirit. Uh, breathe your life into them, Lord God. Uh, yeah, oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind sickness uh, and disease. I, I bind the yokes uh, of the enemy. I destroy the plans of the enemy that's against your people right now. Uh, and I command to leave and never return. And I release your anointing upon your people, God. For the yokes are destroyed because of your anointing. And Lord God, I speak with authority. I speak, Lord God, in Osha, a word in your spirit that they will rise up, Lord God. Your light will shine forth, God. Your light will break forth, Lord God. Lord God, you will bless your people. You will cause them to prosper and be in health, in good health, as your soul prosper today, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. But no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper. And every tongue that has risen up against them in judgment is condemned in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let hope arise. 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 Thank you, Lord. When there's hopelessness, God. I bind the spirit of suicide. You that are viewing right now, a spirit of hopelessness. I bind it to the Christian. I speak hope in your life. You that are you that are living in pain. I bind a demon of infirmity off of your body. The spirit of pain, I bind it, I cast it out. Uh, and I declare the word of God that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you were healed. Uh, and Lord God, heal them, God. And reveal to them an abundance of your peace. Uh, Lord God, those that are being tormented uh, by tormenting spirits, God. Uh, I bind the spirit of torment, God. Uh, and I cast it out, never to return. Uh, and Lord, I speak peace, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I bless you. I bless them. 